Dear brothers and sisters, in the gospel today, Jesus heals a man who is deaf and has a speech impediment. We know that he healed people with all sorts of illnesses, including demonic possession. Jesus heals the pain not only of people who lived in his own time, but he heals the pain of people today. He heals all of us. All who call out to the Lord are healed. Some are healed physically, some are healed emotionally and become able to accept their condition. But everyone, every single person who calls out to the Lord receives a spiritual healing when they unite their pain to the cross of Christ. It's in this context that you and I can best understand the church's sacrament of the sick. What we used to refer to, you probably remember these words, extreme unction or the lost rites. This is Christ in the sacrament really being present to us at a particular time in our lives when we really need his healing power. When we administer the sacrament of the sick, the priest uses some of the oil of the sick that the bishop of the diocese blesses at the chrism mass, and he puts some oil on the person's head and he says, through this holy anointing, may the Lord in his love and his mercy help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. Think about that for a minute. In that moment, when the priest makes the little sign of the cross on the person's forehead with the oil, he's saying, Lord, bring your spirit upon this person. It's the grace of the Holy Spirit himself who's present with the Lord. Then he anoints the hands of the person and he says, may the Lord who frees you from sin save you and raise you up. Think about that. An amazing thing. We're asking the Lord by the power of this Holy Spirit, could this person be raised up? Do you ever notice something at Mass? When we get to the moment when we're going to say the words of institution, the very words of the Lord's himself at the consecration, we say, Lord, send your spirit upon these gifts that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not the priest, it's not the church even, it's the Holy Spirit that transforms that bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. So in the sacrament of the sick, when we ask the Lord, save this person and raise her up, we're asking that same spirit who can transform bread and wine into body and blood of the Lord into a healing moment. Again, sometimes physical, sometimes emotional, but always spiritual. The Lord brings that wonderful power. You know, the sacrament of the sick is a sacrament of the living. We shouldn't wait until someone is near death or has died even to receive it. As soon as someone faces serious illness, or perhaps even is going to the hospital and knows that there's a serious treatment ahead of them, they should make a request of their local parish priest to receive the sacrament of the sick. It is a sacrament of the living. Another thought. If you find yourself in the hospital, or if in fact someone you love is in the hospital, please let the parish priest know. We've got all kinds of new privacy rules at the hospitals now. They call them the HIPAA rules. And with those, we can't expect to arrive at the hospital and see a list of Catholics who were there as we used to be able to have in times past. So if someone is going in, yourself included, Give us a call and let us know that you're going to be there so that we can make a plan to visit you and to be with you in that moment and bring even the sacrament of the sick and Holy Communion with us. It's a wonderful thing. As I mentioned to you at the beginning of Mass today, I have two seminarians here with me from Pope St. John the 23rd National Seminary just outside of Boston. It's the place where I find myself doing work and forming these men for the priesthood and in teaching them theology. It's a wonderful ministry. I'm delighted to be there. These men, pray for them. They are praying themselves and eagerly awaiting the day when the bishop of their diocese will anoint their hands, not in the sacrament of the sick, but in the priesthood, so that they can anoint you. Keep them in your prayers. The men that we have at Pope St. John are wonderful men. They're older men who have recognized their vocation late, just like the Lord's own apostles recognized their vocation late 
and with hearts that were full of tremendous generosity and of love for God, they said, Lord, I'm ready, send me. They're about to receive that grace of sending. Keep them in your prayers and look forward to the day when you'll see them ministering as priests in your own dioceses. God bless you all.